This unusual fruit is not too common, and you have to look for it, but it's quite edible and sweet. And we need to know that, because we... Well, hello there. I'm Green Dean, and welcome to my 119th video here at EatTheWeeze.com. Today I've traveled about 100 miles to Ocala, Florida, to see these. Paper mulberry. This tree grows in profusion where I live. It grows throughout the south and it's moving north. Uh, its native range is actually temperate uh, China, uh, also uh, Japan and Taiwan. It was introduced into Florida in 1903 as an ornamental. Now it's found from uh, Massachusetts southwest to Kansas and south to Florida and Texas. For three decades, all I've ever seen is the male clones of this species. But about two months ago, I was preparing for a foraging class. I happened to see some female trees, and that's exciting. Well, uh, don't take that the wrong way. This is the Bruce Onesia papyrifera. Say that after two glasses of wine, or even one, or none. <laughs> it's the paper mulberry, and it has a bit of history to it. It's originally from the cooler areas of eastern China, where they've been making paper with it for 2,000 years. You can also find it in northern Japan and Taiwan. But, more importantly, it was taken to the Polynesian Islands to provide cloth and paper, both made for the distinctive bark, and it's from Polynesia that it got to the United States. Now, let's go take a look at that bark. Well, here we are in the shade of a paper mulberry tree, if I can take my hat off here. Let's take a look at this bark. Look at the modeling. See how it just is this wonderful, almost zebra, alternating modeling along it? It's over here in the main trunk, too. See that? Pretty easy to identify. Good identifying characteristics, but right here it's very, 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 very clear. Look at that. Almost like you drew little hatch marks on it. It's from this bark that they ret and pound out the, uh, the fibers for cloth and paper. By the way, look at all the fruit here on the ground. Yes, sir. A, lot of, a lot of mulberry fruit there. Very different than the regular mulberry. You know, the regular mulberry has... Uh, has a blackberry shaped fruit. This is a this is a pom pom. Let's take a look at that. By the way, these are closer related to the jackfruit and the Osage orange. The latter which also happens to grow here in Ocala. Here's a young paper mulberry. The leaves are highly indented. You know, somewhere it's between China in the Polynesian islands, someone had the bright idea, or so they thought, was, hey, if we only take males, uh, these won't overrun the islands. Well, the problem was that these things can reproduce vegetatively, so you don't need females, they just kind of need roots and shoots and offsets, and so these things can propagate severely without a, without a she. It's a very adaptable tree, it becomes invasive wherever you plant it. It blankets central Florida, well, at least the male clones do. In fact, most of the time you're going to find just the male clones. The leaves of the paper mulberry have a lot of uses. The, uh, the young, soft, and tender ones can be steamed or boiled for food. They can also be used to cook food in. See how big this leaf is? I think it'd be a foot long, eight inches wide. Uh, wrap food up in it and cook it. And in an emergency, it can also be used as a, as a toilet paper. Although it's kind of rough and will uh, <clears throat> wake you up. As you may know, Florida has a hot climate. And it's not known for having paper mulberries that fruit. 
But this past year, we had the coldest winter in 30 years. And maybe that provided enough chill hours for this temperate tree to produce fruit. A lot of fruiting trees need chill hours. Um, apples do, olives do, wide variety of them, or they can't produce fruit. So perhaps this cold winter has something to do with the fruiting of the mulberries. I don't know. I'll come back next year and check it out just to make sure. Here in Eat the Weeds we itemize, so let's itemize the paper mulberry. And we start with identification. It's a fast growing deciduous tree to about 50 feet. Very wide with spreading branches. These can be heart shaped, uh, mitten shapes, double mittens. Thumbs on one side, thumbs on the other, thumbs on both sides. Um, it can be large up to a foot long, maybe eight inches across. Fuzzy on top, coarsely serrated edges. The sap is white. The ripe fruit kind of looks like a little orange pom pom and the bark has distinctive stripes. Yep. Time of year, young leaves, whenever they're available, particularly uh, little ones, you know, inch or so across. Uh, the, it flowers in the spring, it fruits in the summer. Now, exactly where in summer depends upon where you are. Here in Florida, right now it's in the mid-June and they're fruiting nicely. Environment, extremely adaptable. It likes full sun and water, but can tolerate drought and some shade. About the only place it won't grow is where they have bitterly cold winters. Method of preparation. Fruit out of hand when ripe, young leaves boiled or steamed. The sap, by the way, has been used as a laxative. Oh, also, when you're talking about the fruit right here, it's just the, uh, the orange or the red part. Not the green inside. Just a little frilly pom-pom parts. A little bit of history. You know, in the Christian tradition, Adam and Eve covered themselves with a fig leaf. That's rather telling because uh, the paper mulberries, actually all the mulberries are in the fig family, and the fig bark and mulberry bark have been used for a long time to make cloth for people. It's interesting when you look behind the symbol and the word and see what, what the history can produce. Thanks for joining me on my 119th video, this time about the paper mulberry. If you want to know more about the paper mulberry or hundreds of other edible plants, go to eattheweeds.com and go to archives and type or type in the name in the search window. And if you want my newsletter, please send me your email address. So until next time, when I'll be probably talking about the dreaded Solanum Americanum, part one, this is Green Dean. I want you to think green, eat green, and live green, and sometimes that's orange to red pom-pom little mulberries. There we go. Mm. Too fragile to ship, that's why they're not a commercial product, but they are quite tasty.